So grab your popcorn and turn off the lights. We have five mind-blowing movie recommendations for you. Number one, The Invisible Guest. The 2016 movie The Invisible Guest will shock you throughout. Adrian Doria is a young and wealthy businessman named Man of the Year due to his innovative tech company. He also has a loving family and a caring wife. His perfect life, however, crumbles suddenly when he finds himself locked up in a hotel room next to a dead body. Standing accused of first-degree murder, Adrian meets with veteran lawyer Virginia Goodman. Expert in witness preparation and judicial declaration recommended by Adrian's lawyer, Felix Laver, in order to create a credible defence. Adrian explains to Virginia details about the crime and his relationship with Laura, revealing that both parties suffered a car crash where a man named Daniel Garrido died and how Laura manipulated Adrian to avoid jail due to Daniel's death. At the same time, Felix is looking for a clue that could change the course of events. Virginia and Adrian keep talking about the case, but she, unconvinced of Adrian's testimony, forces him to clear certain parts of his story. In a puzzle where truth and lies are not easily distinguished. But even though there can be more than one side to a story, only one can be real. So who was the invisible guest in the hotel room? Number two. Shutter Island. Shutter Island is one of Martin Scorsese's extraordinary works. Martin Scorsese's psychological thriller, Shutter Island, based on Dennis Lehane's 2003 novel of the same name, Shutter Island. This was the fourth collaboration between Scorsese and DiCaprio. It was a box office hit making $295 million worldwide. It was the highest grossing Scorsese release up until it was surpassed by The Wolf of Wall Street. Federal Marshal Teddy Daniels, played by Leonardo DiCaprio, and his new partner Chuck All, played by Mark Ruffalo, travel from Seattle to Shutter Island to investigate the disappearance of a patient there, Rachel Salando. She has been sectioned at the Institution for Dangerous Criminals at Ashcliffe Hospital because she drowned her three kids. Teddy Daniels is still traumatised from what he witnessed when his army unit liberated one of the Nazi concentration camps at the end of World War II and he is still haunted by his wife's more recent death in a fire. As a hurricane cuts off communication with the mainland, Teddy follows a lead to the lighthouse, where he discloses the mystery of Shutter Island. Teddy begins to doubt everything. His memory, his partner, even his own sanity. Which would be worse, to live as a monster or to die as a good man. Number three, Gone Girl. The 2014 movie Gone Girl, directed by David Fincher, is an adaptation from the hit novel by Gillian Flynn. The film tells the story of a crumbling marriage between Nick, played by Ben Affleck, and Amy Elliott Dunn, played by Rosamund Pike. The couple's fifth anniversary is interrupted by Amy's sudden and suspicious disappearance. Nick and Amy's story starts as a classic love story and ends in deception and revenge. Nick Dunn is a college professor and a writer suffering from writer's block. Amy, his wife, disappears one day, prompting local cops to open a missing persons case that soon becomes a murder investigation after three days go by without any trace of her. 
Amy and Nick seem like a happy couple. However, the snippets from Amy's diary, Nick's unusual behavior at the vigil, led the audience and the police to suspect that Nick was behind Amy's disappearance. Things only got worse when the audience discovered that Nick, once a devoted husband, had been having an affair with Andy Fitzgerald, played by none other than Emily Ratajkowski, a student in his class at a local college. Under pressure from the police and a growing media frenzy, Nick's portrait of a blissful union begins to crumble. Soon, Nick's lies, deceit, and strange behavior has everyone asking the same question: Did Nick Dunn really kill his wife? Number four, Prestige. The Prestige is a 2006 released movie, directed and written by Christopher Nolan, based on the 1995 novel of the same name by Christopher Priest. The film stars Hugh Jackman as Robert Angier and Christian Bale as Alfred Borden. It also stars Scarlett Johansson, Michael Caine, and David Bowie as Nikola Tesla. The film reunites Nolan with actors Bale and Caine from Batman Begins. The Prestige garnered Academy Award nominations for Best Cinematography and Best Art Direction. In 19th century London, illusionist Alfred Borden is on trial for the murder of fellow illusionist Robert Angier. Robert Angier and Alfred Borden are rival stage magicians. Obsessed with creating the best stage illusion, engage in competition with fatal results. During a water tank trick, Angier's wife Julia fails to escape and drowns. The devastated Angier holds Borden responsible for using a rope knot different to what they normally used in the performance. At Julia's funeral, Borden denies knowing which knot he had tied, and the two men become enemies. They start creating their own shows, where each man's goal is to ruin the other. While Borden is arguably more accomplished in the technical aspects of the illusions, Angier is the more accomplished showman. Number five, Prisoners. The movie Prisoners, released in 2014, is one of the best kidnapping movies of all time, directed by Denis Villeneuve. The movie has a strong cast with Hugh Jackman and Jake Gyllenhaal. Set in a town in northeastern Pennsylvania, Kella Dover, played by Hugh Jackman, his wife Grace, their teenage son Ralph, and their daughter Anna, go to the home of one of their neighbors, Franklin Birch. His wife Nancy, their teenage daughter Eliza, and their youngest daughter. Joy to celebrate Thanksgiving. While the two families are celebrating together, the two adolescent girls Anna and Joy go missing. Based on events earlier in the day, the two families believe that the girls were abducted by whoever lives in the camper van parked in their neighborhood. Their beliefs are further strengthened After they meet Alex Jones, a mentally childlike young man who lives in the camper van and is coddled by his overprotective aunt Holly Jones, Detective Loki, played by Jake Gyllenhaal, is assigned to the case and he arrests Alex Jones. Soon they learn that Alex has the IQ of a ten-year-old boy and he is discharged. Loki continues his investigation while Keller accuses him of not doing his job by following what he considers are pointless leads. This is when Keller decides he has to take matters into his own hands. We hope you add these internationally acclaimed movies to your list and view them next time you have a movie night, and you'll see why we've recommended them.